Welcome to CBC News Windsor at 5.30. I'm Lisa Shing. Asha Tomlinson is away. Here's what's making headlines tonight. From military to big business, real estate agents are jumping on the drone bandwagon. A teenage boy is arrested after an assault on his mother. And the Windsor Express is on a roll and passing their good fortune onto the fans. They're the must-have gadget for amateur pilots everywhere. Here in Windsor, drones are getting put to a whole new use. In fact, CBC News has learned they may even help sell your home. Nick Boisvert is here live with more. Nick, what exactly have you found out? Lisa, they're likely to be a popular gift, but businesses around Windsor say miniature drones are more than just toys. They could be the next big thing in real estate. We are ready for liftoff on Elliott Street. Paul Roulard is here with his quadcopter drone. The tiny GoPro camera is rolling. Today's mission, get this house off the market. Roulard's been a realtor for more than 10 years, and when he saw a drone tour of a home in California four months ago, he knew he had to have one. Uh, the moment I seen it, within one hour, I ordered a drone online. Um, it was at my door within five days. I had all my camera set up within one week, and I was flying and did my first tour by then. And I always wanted to be a pilot, so this is the next closest thing. It's technology that's caught some of his clients off guard. Freeman Aubin did not know what to expect when Roulard offered a drone tour of his property. But once I seen uh, footage of it, uh, I was really amazed and uh, I said, well, yeah, for sure. Roulard says his drone videos are not just flashy marketing. They're actually helping him make sales. I did it for another client. By day two, we had an offer on the property and it was from a buyer in Toronto who's never been here to see the property. They seen the tour which is a complete aerial footage of the property and an inside tour, and it was sold within one week and they didn't even see the property. This technology is giving realtors something they've never had before, affordable access to high quality aerial footage. It can wow potential buyers and possibly do a whole lot more on a much larger scale. Back on Elliott Street, the shooting's done and the video is headed to the web. For the modern realtor, just another day at the office. Perfect landing. <laughs> now, we should note that even though he has fun flying, Paul Roulard does take this seriously. He's insured and files flight plans for every video shoot. But as drones become cheaper and more widely available, there are concerns that not everyone will follow the rules. We'll have more on that tomorrow. Lisa? Thanks so much, Nick. This story has already generated a lot of feedback on our website. Stay tuned for that later on in the show. To reaction now on our top story, one of today's most viewed stories on cbc.ca slash Windsor. Real estate agents are going high tech using drones to sell houses right here in Windsor, Essex. A lot of you raised concerns about the increasing use of drone technology. It seems you're worried about safety, privacy, and getting caught without the right approvals. Ron warns you may be liable for more fines and jail time now using drones for certain uses and are not covered under policies for insurance. Beware all. Another viewer writes, I'm worried about someone accidentally flying one into the engine of an airplane or perhaps causing some kind of accident. And from Amanda, quite frankly, with the video cameras on some of them, it's a breach of privacy for some people. They've had reports of people using them to look in high-rise building windows. Canadian real estate agents are embracing the use of drones to help sell homes and properties. The drones are being used to give people a better look at properties for sale. Joining us for more on this now is Paul Rouillard, a real estate broker based in Windsor, Ontario, and he uses drones to make video tours of his listed properties. Thanks for being on our program. Thank you for having me. So how did you come up with idea, this idea to use drones? Well, I was sitting at my parents' house watching television, and uh, we were watching a program on real estate in California. And uh, we saw a program on drones. We thought it was really neat. Uh, no, no more than an hour later, uh, we were on the internet shopping for drones. Uh, we found the drone we wanted and had it delivered within the week. Oh, my goodness. So what makes this aerial <laughs> footage of re real estate so different? 
Well, it is different. Uh, it's a completely different perspective. Nobody needs to live to leave their living room just to see a real estate property anymore. They can see it right from the comfort of their own couch. And uh, when they see a property, uh, a tour just like this, they get a better idea of the property. They can see the complete area, um, and they can see the entire property all around in a 360 view rather than just seeing a photo from the ground that has always been uh, a standard and you know the same type of uh, image. I like the fact that you can see what's happening with the roof. <laughs> now have these <laughs> drones uh, help you sell more homes? How do your clients respond? Well, they love it. It's still really new. Uh, there's a lot of laws governing it right now, um, and there's going to be more laws coming very soon. So we have to be very uh, cautious with this. Um, but my clients that I do it with, when they see it first time, uh, they're just in awe and they can't believe because they've never seen a property that looks like this, um, especially their own property. And, and when you're flying up 200 feet, uh, they never see that angle of the of the shoot. Um, so. Just two weeks ago, uh, one of my brokers that works for our company here, he listed a property. I went over, did a drone tour. By next day, he had an offer from Toronto, property situated in Windsor, and they didn't even see the property, and they wrote an offer on the property right away just from the virtual tour. From, and it ended up being sold a few days later. Wow, it's all in the marketing. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being with us. We're running out of time, but we appreciate you being with us. Paul Riard, real estate broker based in Windsor, Ontario. Good luck to you. Thank you. This is CBC News, Windsor at 530. I'm Lisa Shing. Asha Tomlinson is away tonight. Here's what's making headlines. Where can they fly and what can they record? We look into rules for drones. Police investigate another arson case in Windsor and same items, but we pay more in Canada. How price gouging can soon trigger investigations. A follow to our story last night on drones that are popping up across Windsor. They can be useful as we saw last night with some realtors. They're also fun gadgets. But there are growing worries that not everyone is flying safely. The CBC's Nick Boisvert has been looking into the issue. Nick, what are you finding out? Lisa, drones are cheaper than ever and with the holidays coming up, we should be seeing even more above the city. So the question now, how to regulate it all? That's Joe Busco flying his Phantom II quadcopter. It's a $1,500 unmanned aircraft, better known as a drone. We're here in an empty Jackson Park on a calm day to talk about safe flying. The wind right now is not that bad. It's not uh, raining or any uh, fog. There's no uh, power lines, you know, nothing that could disrupt a flight in the air. busco has been flying for just four months, but he's a good example of a responsible drone pilot. That's uh, about 90 meters right there. As drones get cheaper and more popular, some people worry that not everyone will be this careful. Busco is among them. I'm sure there'll be uh, incidents uh, in Windsor. There's been a ton of incidents all over the internet. If you look on YouTube, um, there's one guy flying it in the middle of Times Square, crashing it. What is going through your head at this time? Like, what would possess you to, to, to go out and do this kind of flight? Drones are regulated by Transport Canada. A small one like Busco's does not require a permit, but it needs to follow certain guidelines. Among them, it cannot fly near airports higher than 90 meters, within 30 meters of people, or over crowded areas. Unlike airports in Toronto and Vancouver, Windsor International has not had an incident. It's hoping common sense will keep it that way. There really is no um, rational reason why you should be flying a drone in, in any of this. The vicinities of, of approaches to the airport. Transport Canada says it's still developing more guidelines, trying to keep up with changing technology. Busco says he welcomes tighter restrictions. Sooner or later, you're gonna, everybody's going to require permits because, you know, this kind of device, if you have two, 200 of these devices in the air, there, there's going to be accidents. But for now, drone pilots are still responsible for educating themselves. Transport Canada just got back to me. It says its guidelines are recommendations only. Still, it asks people to report incidents where a drone has put the public at risk and it will investigate. That could involve the police, especially if privacy laws are broken.